it's part of the extended festival that is the IABA meeting um, throughout the rest of the year. And um, so we're really excited to be here. Uh, I'm Sarah Tapama. I know a lot of you, but not all of you. Um, I am a board member of the SOA, and I also have been leading our DE&I uh, work for the last couple of years as a board member. Um, and we'll be passing a lot of that on to uh, Jenny Hayde and others who are chairing various committees. So appreciate everybody's support there. Um, and just wanna make sure everyone's aware that the session is being recorded. I think Beth just started the recording, but we're gonna turn off the recording later in case there are uh, questions that people would rather not have um, on record. And so um, we, we will do that probably towards the end of this session. Um, I would encourage you as you have questions to put them in the chat box at, while we're talking um, and then we'll open it up for a more interactive discussion later. What we have planned is just a, maybe 20 minutes or so of um, 20 minutes or so of like pre-planned discussion and then um, we will move into Q and A and um, in an open forum. And then I guess the, the other thing I would say is um, just, you know, think of questions and have those ready for us. Uh, we have with us today um, from the SOA, we have all of our presidential officers. We have uh, Roy Goldman, who's our current president. We have Andy Rallis, who's our past president, and Jennifer Gillespie, who is our president-elect. And um, I, I want to also say that we're joined by a couple of uh, amazing SOA staff members <coughs> who are really involved in DEI. and i um, Solskin is our new um, brand new and hit the ground running um, leader of DE&I activities for the SOA. We're so excited to have you, Solskin. Um, and then I also want to make sure I mention uh, Beth Gall, who a lot of you know, and um, Courtney Nashen, who's also been very involved in DE&I activities. So um, <laughs> they're all waving. Um, but um, Solskin, maybe um, later on in the discussion, if you want to just say hello and introduce yourself a bit, but uh, we'll move into our, our sort of plan comments and then we'll open it up later for, for discussion. Um, so I just wanted to um, say thank you to Kate and the IABA for hosting this and, have, and having us here. Um, we are very committed to supporting the IABA uh, and we want to continue to do so. Um, we're excited to see so many of you here today on this call. And um, I know that uh, Roy, Andy, and Jennifer also share that sentiment, but I guess I'll throw it over to the three of you just to say hello and, um, and if you have any early comments in this discussion. Um, yeah, go ahead, Andy. Roy, you go ahead. <laughs> Hi, well, I too, I want to echo, uh, thank you for uh, letting us join your meeting. Uh, looking forward to a discussion today. I think, obviously, this is uh, one of the key uh, initiatives uh, that I talked about uh, in my installation and uh, following up on, you know, on what, what Andy started uh, during, during his term as president. And, uh, uh, you know, looking forward to uh, telling you what we're doing and also getting, getting advice and feedback from from you as well. And I just mentioned that as Solskin was introdu introduced, uh, that uh, you go on the uh, SOA website right now, you'll see her picture and you can click on, uh, on her name and uh, see an outstanding uh, bio that she has and, and uh, the amount of skill and experience she'll, she'll bring to, uh, to her position with the SOA. I'm glad to have her. And uh, I'm Andy Rallis, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be uh, back talking with you guys. And you know me uh, both as the past president of the SOA, but also a member of your corporate advisory uh, council representing MetLife. And I'm Jennifer Gillespie. So I'm the, the president elect, happy to join all of you today. Before I was elected, I was serving as an SOA representative on the joint committee that we have with the CAS. So I started to get immersed in those topics, but I'm really happy to have a chance to work with all of you as, a, as an organization too. So looking forward to today's talk. Great, thanks you guys. And um, you know, I think I wanna just start off by reminding everyone of um, 
and a call to action that Andy presented to the SOA membership um, early in the summer this past year. And um, hopefully everyone is aware of that call to action. Uh, and I, I guess I, I would throw it to you, Andy, first, just to, can you just yeah. talk about some of those actions and, and kind of what, what we've been up to since then and where that's headed? You know, I just, and I just wanna sort of, uh, you know, frame it up because the call to action, you could, you could see that the time was right for that. There were, there were uh, societal elements, many organizations coming to, to grips with this. Uh, there were you know, certainly personal elements, you know, I, I you know, recognizing uh, events in, in, in our own lives, my own life that uh, lead up to this, but also recognition that the SOA, and this is, by the way, this is Prince, he's very rambunctious. The SOA, <laughs> I think he found so we, we, believe, we believe in inclusion. Yeah, we believe definitely in inclusion, yeah. but, but the SOA, <laughs> and we saw that with events over the summer, even despite our, I kind of, I would say strict meritocracy, I think the Amy Cooper situation showed us that even our own organization and our profession was not immune to these kinds of forces and, and these kinds of dynamics, and that we really needed to get, get serious about addressing, uh, addressing things. And, and uh, you know, one of the, uh, I think, you know, we, what we, we brought um, our, uh, our current president and our, our president-elect uh, as well to, to show that, you know, this was not a, it's not a one-time thing. We really, we're really committed to this on an ongoing basis. And so it wasn't just a point in time thing. It was, you know, if there, if there was a point in time, the point in time was just the beginning, not, not the end of it. And, uh, you know, despite me transitioning into past president, uh, that there are uh, committed leaders who, who will, including myself during this year of past presidency, who will uh, take our initiatives uh, in the call to action forward. So, uh, Sarah, are you going to recap the, the call to action and I'm going to talk about specifics or? Um, I I was just going to, you know, ask you if you could talk of a few of the elements that we've been working so hard on. I know uh, one of the things is it's a, you know, we've made it a strategic initiative of the SOA. Yeah, so it's really it's, one of it's the top a, couple things we're working on. So, you know, what are the specific actions that are going on as a result of that? I guess yeah, yeah, some look, of those, uh, or I can as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm ready. I've got some notes. I mean, we, you know, the first the first thing is, uh, well, both the board has been active and the SOA as an organization has been active. Okay, and the you know the SOA the board has approved a charter for a new uh, DEI committee. Okay, I'm going to be the board liaison to that committee. Um, but uh, you know, let's let's talk about who's who's been nominated. So it's approved the committee, the charter for the committee, and the membership of the committee. Jamala Arlen from uh, vice president from Genworth is uh, the chair, Emily Sue, uh, associate uh, actuary from Sun Life is a vice chair. I'm gonna be the board liaison. Uh, and we've got also John Robinson as one of the members. He's a former IABA president. Um, and so we've got, uh, we've got good, a good committee and they'll be more or less charged with overseeing all of our DEI initiatives, uh, and including interfacing with your organization, including interfacing with uh, our joint committee with the with the the, uh, the CAS and other, I, I would say, industry events. Um, we've approved our 2021 budget, which includes uh, increased support, financial support for. Uh, our partner organizations, including yourself, uh, but also the organization of Latino actuaries and the Actuarial Foundation who work in, in the, the DEI space as well. Uh, so that, that's already been approved, the increased funding for those. Um, I, I wanna refresh, you know, we, we, did, we did appoint 
a special task force on personal conduct that was came out of the, the Amy Cooper situation. Uh, you know, we can talk about that a little bit more, but that 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 task force continues to work. We've we've uh, remanded the specific situation to the ABCD uh, for consideration of discipline. But I think it you know some of the issues that grew out of that uh, require us to th to think further. You know, I uh, you know that was a very high profile situation. It, it even resulted in criminal charges. Um, not all situations are going to be like that. And how do we want to function as an organization uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, I, I would say personal conduct. You know, I, you know, I think of that as, as uh, you know, just the way I frame it. You know, many of us went to colleges. There's usually typically an honor code about how we're going to conduct ourselves. It doesn't, it doesn't spill over into our, you know, professional life, which is more, you know, you know, much more serious matters, you know, where you get into issues uh, that, uh, you know, affect financial statements and all of that kind of stuff. This is really, you know, how, how are we to be, you know, civil with each other? Um, and do we, you know, do we need to establish some, some, you know, rules like that, rules of engagement like that and, and uh, enforce them? Um, and you know, I would say, you know, like I said at the beginning, I think that that call to action is really just a start. It is obvious that there's a lot of work to be done. Um, in and and I would say, you know, D, you know, we call it DEI, but I'm going to say each one of those diversity, equity, and inclusion, there's work to be done in each area. It's not just um, we can just say, okay, we're going to. Uh, uh, you know, have more uh, black actuaries. Uh, it's 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 you know we have to we have to cre you know continue to build environments where uh, uh, you know that kind of diversity is encouraged to be you know uh, participate and and uh, express themselves. So it's not it's not just a it's not a one dimensional problem. I think this is the beginning. Uh, rather, you know, than you know, just uh, it, you know, uh, a start, you know, a, a point in time where we just said, okay, we're going to focus on this. I think this is going to be a real focus. In fact, in fact, uh, yeah, thanks, Andy. I would, I would say that. So, I, I've appointed the uh, nine individuals so far to the uh, SOA's uh, diversity committee, and and they are a, a, a diverse group of individuals that that follows along with the, you know, the SOA's uh, diversity and, and inclusion statement. You know, you know we, we believe the SOA best fulfills its mission when it's diverse and inclusive of all individuals. You know, openness, acceptance of diverse perspectives, cultures, and backgrounds helps us attract the best talent and ensures Ensures include not just inclusivity of the profession, but I think we can do a better job for all of our stakeholders, our, our employers and clients. And to, to emphasize what, what Andy was saying about uh, we're open to all kinds of diversity, the uh, state, our, our statement goes on to say the SOA welcomes the membership and participation of all individuals, regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, age, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, disability or national origin. Uh, so the, uh, that's, I guess it's good, it's a long list. Maybe it's unfortunate that it has to be such a long list uh, when if we would just treat everybody uh, the, the way we wanna be treated uh, would, would probably go a long way. And, and we'll talk about, as, as we go through, I think, the session today, other, other pieces of the initiatives that, uh, that we are working on uh, that came out of uh, Andy's original 10-point uh, you know, list. Yep. So, Sarah, maybe you turn it back to you for... Uh, yeah, great. Answer. So, um, you know, I, I'm glad you brought all that up. And I think... Um, well, one of the things I wanted to make sure I mentioned too is, is I think a lot of you are recently involved with this as well, is 
in, um, the, the US qualification standards were recently under exposure draft. And so I wanted to make sure everyone realized that there was a, quite a movement to add DE&I topics as specifically calling them out as professionalism. Um, so, you know, individual members have the opportunity to uh, submit their comments to that exposure and um, uh, lots and lots of people, and I think many of you hopefully did, said, you know, we, we think that DEI topics need to be part of professionalism. And to me, that's, it's symbolic in some ways, but it's also really great because it will encourage people to, to get the kind of training. Um, and, and, you know, we, we've offered those kinds of sessions at meetings, but they don't always, aren't always well attended because they only count towards business credit, business topics credit. But if they count towards professionalism, we should see a pretty big uptake. So, if, if the uh, Qualification Standards Committee decides to do that, um, you know, there could be a really strong demand for um, these kinds of topics. So I'm, I'm hoping that that is, that is helpful and um, we'll see a, an interesting movement there. Um, you know, Roy, I guess if you wanna mention a few of the other things that are going on um, within the SOA related to, you know, Andy's call to action, but what you kind of see in the future as you head into your presidency this year. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, there, there's a few things. First, first of all, when we, we talk about uh, diversity, we're talking about increasing representation of, of minorities and other ethnic groups within the actual profession, but also in the SOA state. And you, you have uh, already been introduced to uh, Solskin Gomez Crow, uh, who is uh, we hired as a new diversity, equity, and inclusion a leader, and she will uh, she'll be working with you know both the SOA committee and and uh, and also the, the joint committee, uh, and she'll be supporting strategy and work with with organizations such as your organization, the IABA, uh, OLA, and the Sexual and Gender Alliance for Actuaries, well S A G A A as well as the actual foundation, which, you know, has a lot of uh, contacts in high schools and middle schools. You know, and one of the things that we learned it, with the joint research that we did uh, with uh, the IABA and also the CAS uh, was uh, reported on at uh, your 2018 meeting was the, uh, you know, one great inhibitor to uh, getting minor minorities uh, to uh, become actuaries is lack of awareness of the profession. And so that's, uh, it, Andy talked about some of the uh, additional budget that, uh, that we have approved. Um, a, a good piece of that is to inc increase the awareness of the profession among high school students, uh, which is where the actual foundation can help us. And uh, I'm hoping that you know, the, one of the things that the joint committee works on is uh, High School Actuarial Day. And uh, I'm calling for in 2021, hopefully we can announce a national uh, High School Actuarial Day. If not one day uh, during the week where universities and actuaries around the country can, uh, can, can speak to high school students and you know, tens of thousands at, at one time about, about our profession. Uh, we've also retained a, an outside uh, consulting firm called Inquest. Uh, they specialize in diversity, equity, and inclusion. And they're going to help the, the, develop volunteer and staff training and, and conduct an assessment of our educational programs to ensure that they're free of unintended bias and uh, help us further refine our, our strategy. Uh, you know, We'll talk more about the professional development programs, uh, uh, both um, some, some, you know, some webinars and, uh, and also in our actual meetings. We'll continue to feature uh, information about diversity. And we'll talk a little bit more of that, about that later. And as well as our research, uh, we'll talk about the research that, we are, that we're doing that's specifically related to uh, the bias and and healthcare, for example. Cool. Thanks, Ray. And Roy, you mentioned something that's, I think, a really critical element to 
um, increasing you know, awareness and, and the profession for candidates of color. And that is, you know, High School Actuarial Day and the work that the Career Encouragement Group has been doing. And so if, for those of you who aren't aware, the Joint Committee of the SOA and CAS has a Career Encouragement Work Group. And they're, they're the ones who really developed that High School Actuarial Day, as well as a ton of other uh, programs and um, liaisons and, and other activities. They've been really busy for a number of years. And Jennifer, you've been part of that joint committee overall. Um, you know, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, other strategies that the SOA is seeking to increase that candidate pipeline? Absolutely. So when we think about DE and I, the fact that exams are blind when they're graded is a, is a nice piece for equity, but it doesn't help us a lot for diversity or inclusion. Um, and so we recognize that we have to get diverse candidates into the pipeline in order for it to do any good. So, you know, we've been listening to what are the hurdles and so what can we do to uh, make it more accessible. So we're looking at expanding the diversity exam reimbursement program to cover some additional exams, as well as to reimburse candidates who get fours or fives rather than just if they pass so that maybe they'll be more encouraged to try. I mean, it takes a real effort to get a four or five, so it's a, it's a serious attempt, but maybe it's a little bit less intimidating and maybe a little more encouraging if, if you know that you can get reimbursement for that really good effort that wasn't quite good enough. And expand it. Um, at this point, it's just US and Canada. Diversity is actually rather hard to define when we go internationally, so that's still a challenge that's in front of us, but um, you know, don't wanna wait for that to do the right things here. So also supporting scholarships to more schools, um, specifically the HBCUs and other programs where we're gonna find more diverse students who are math minded, but they're not in a CME. So they're not already maybe in an intense actuarial program, but they would make good actuaries. So how do we help them hear about it? And that's some of the outreach that Sarah was just mentioning. And then how do we support them in the process? And also trying to make information about these things more readily accessible to people. So it's on our website under the future actuary section. So hopefully people can find it. I know personally, I had somebody um, who was a person of color who reached out to me about, you know, how do they make progress in the actual area? And I was able to point them to, you know, the foundation and um, the place on the SOA's website and they, they actually got the support they needed. And that was a nice success story. Uh, I think we can always do better. And also, if you have other ideas about what some of the hurdles are, you know, please raise them with any of the folks who are speaking on this call today, because if it's something that we can tackle, we want to, right? So um, we, don't, we don't know what we don't know or what we haven't thought of yet. Yeah, that's a great point, Jennifer. We would love to hear from all of you because that, that the best way for us to understand what the issues are and how to address them is to, is to hear what's actually going on. Um, and not making assumptions as, you know, we definitely don't want to be doing that. And I, and I do think we're committed to inclusion. Um, you know, you talk about that issue of equity. Um, you know, we, we talk about this, this meritocracy and I think it's a bit of a myth. Um, if we don't have, we can't have a meritocracy if we can't get equitable pipelines into the profession to begin with. So, you know, I hope that I hope that anything we can do to try to encourage either high school kids or even middle school kids, early college students um, into the profession, we want to hear ways we can get we can get more of them aware of the profession. So thanks for bringing that up. Um, you know, Roy, I think we'll, we'll talk a little bit about professional development if you don't mind, and then I would like to open it up for questions right after that, so that we have a lot of time for questions. Um, so Roy, if you want to just talk a little bit, you mentioned earlier you talked a bit about professional development. Do you want to? Talk about some of the things that have been going on this year. Yeah, so during 2020, uh, we offered four sessions at, uh, on diversity and inclusion topics at both the, the health meeting and the annual meeting. Uh, I, I had the honor during the, the annual meeting to, uh, to interview uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates, you know, who's a, a well-known journalist and uh, writes about you know, his experiences of being black in America, but a uh, great book, uh, one of the great books he, he wrote was uh, Eight Years in Power um, about, uh, we, we really, really learned about, you know, uh, for me, you know, for uh, 
um, for what it is to, to live as a black in America and even, even having a black president and uh, you know, what the repercussions were of having a black president. Uh, very illuminating work. And uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't think he didn't allow his uh, conversation with me to be recorded. So I hope, uh, hope you got to see it uh, during the, the annual meeting. But uh, he was very, very thoughtful. We could have continued our discussion for another, another hour. Uh, also, the, the SOA, the CES Joint Committee, uh, this year presented at, uh, it's called the Dive In Festival. You know, Dive In is an annual three-day festival in September that focuses on year-round practices in diversity and inclusion in the insurance field. And this is the first time that uh, we were able to participate in that event. Uh, and we're planning for the a second year. You know, we also host the virtual networking sessions for LGBTQ groups. Uh, we've had uh, sessions for OL OLA at our annual meeting. And uh, other things that we're gonna do is, is we're making sure that our own leaders get training about unintended bias. We had the leaders of all of our, our committees uh, and board members uh, attend a session in November where it was a presentation on, on, on micro, microaggression, unintended bias. I, I think it was, all of us found it uh, very illuminating. And uh, you know, it actually, it's one of the things that we even, um, as board members, we have, we have training on board members. And after each board meeting, actually, we have surveys to see whether or not we're, we're following uh, what we said that we would do regarding uh, um, bias and also things like groupthink, you know, uh, and are, are, we, are we concentrating on strategy? So we, we're, con we're constantly measuring ourselves. And I think one of the most important things that, uh, that we need to do this year, I think, is to come up with, with the proper metrics to measure, you know, how well we're measuring progress. Obviously, if we, you know, if we set a goal that, let's say, the number of uh, black fellows in the SOA should, should match the percentage in, uh, in society, uh, you know, we start now. You know, by the time we re re recruit high school, you know, high school students, they get through college, they get through our exams, you know, we're talking 15, 10 to 15 years. So we need to have uh, some uh, metrics that uh, measure progress along the way. Great, thanks. And you know, so I, th I think at this point, I'm going to um, open it up for anyone to ask a question. I see there's a question in the chat from Monique saying, um, can we make the first exam free? Um, and we've talked about that, actually, it's a great idea. Um, there are lots of logistical issues related to that, but um, it's certainly something we've thought about and we, would, we will continue to think about. It. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, you know, that, that one, by, one of the things I've heard anecdotally is that um, candidates who are less familiar with the profession, and that would include probably lots of candidates of color, um, they, they fail their first exam and they think, you know, oh, that's it, I'm not doing this anymore, versus um, maybe other candidates who either have a support system or other people they know who've taken the exam to say, no, no, you know, you got you to gotta give it more than one try. Um, everybody fails one, you know, so uh, get that kind of encouragement is, might not be available for someone who's less aware of the profession. And so we want to make sure that we remove that financial barrier at least. Um, and, and that's why we're talking about doing the, the reimbursement for fours and fives. So, you know, you've had a noble attempt, but you didn't pass. We'll still reimburse that for, for our diverse candidates. So um, thanks, Monique, for bringing that up. Um, are there any other questions from this group? Um, and um, maybe at this point, um, Beth, we can turn off the recording in case anyone wants to ask something that they prefer to not have recorded and um, we can go from there. So um, I, I welcome anyone to ask if I, oh, I see Jeffrey, if you wanna go ahead and ask, 